12 years of waiting for something is enough to drive anyone insane. I, an insane person, should absolutely know. That being said, the gap between A Dance with Dragons and The Winds of Winter has allowed a number of conspiracy theories to grow and flourish, all within the thriving A Song of Ice and Fire fan community. We've got Grand Maester Conspiracies, asserting that the Maesters have been behind any given historical event. We've got the Grand Northern Conspiracy, stating that the entire North is working together to restore Stark rule. And today we've got a third thing, a Great Wine Conspiracy. Specifically, we'll be talking about Arbor Gold, one particular vintage that seems intrinsically tied to dishonesty and misdirection in the series. I'll be examining this theory while drinking an appropriate amount of wine, so I hope that you'll sit back and enjoy an entirely coherent analysis of this theory. So, to start, this conspiracy isn't one within the text. It's more of a meta idea. There aren't a million characters behind the curtain plotting to coordinate wine poisonings or something similar. This conspiracy, at least as I like to think of it, is on the part of the author himself. George R. R. Martin is an excellent writer, and he tends to lay the groundwork for future events through little hints within the text itself. Arbor Gold might just be one of those hints. He seems to enjoy working the term in, specifically during feast and during dance, when a character is being dishonest, or when irony or deception is heavily involved in any given situation. The main point at which attention is drawn to this specific type of wine is in the first Sansa chapter of A Feast for Crows. Littlefinger is preparing for a meeting with the Lord's Declarant of the Vale, and he's briefing Sansa on his schemes, telling her all about the lies he's going to tell and what he hopes to accomplish with these deceptions. Twice during the chapter, he specifically remarks about this type of wine. To quote from Sansa 1, A Feast for Crows, Petire picked up his quill again. We shall serve them lies and arbor gold, and he'll drink them down and ask for more, I promise you. Then again, a bit later in that same chapter, to quote, Sansa was asleep on her feet by then, wanting only to crawl off into her bed, but Pitire caught her by the wrist. You see the wonders that can be worked by lies and arbor gold. The initial purpose of this passage seems to be mostly a turn of phrase from Peter and a lesson from Sansa. However, if we the readers begin to consider this lesson ourselves, or ourselves if you're a tokenist, a larger pattern begins to emerge. Arbor Gold is specifically referenced 20 times total in our story, and the majority of those times are directly tied into deceit or into dishonesty of some type. So let's take a look at these exact examples in the text and when this phrase is used and when it's tied concretely to lies. Firstly, to kind of solidify this connection, and then we'll branch out into the more kind of abstract versions of this or the Arbor Gold instances that could apply to the future of the story and where it could be going in the Winds of Winter. After Sansa's chapter, the next time we hear about Arbor Gold is in Cersei 4, where it crops up three times. It's offered by Orton Merriweather during his introduction, and it seems to fit perfectly for his character. By this point in the book, the vintage is already associated with dishonesty, and we later learn that Orton is not to be trusted. In fact, he's not to be trusted because he's in the pockets of the Tyrells, tying him to the Reach and further tying him to Arbor Gold, as they are the lords of the land in which this wine originates. The same thing happens with his wife, Tana, as she and Cersei stay up drinking and gossiping this exact wine, which sounds, frankly, wonderful. Neither of them are to be trusted, as they are likely uh, sworn to the Tyrells for their allegiance. They are directly sworn to the Tyrells, as they are lords of the Reach, I misspoke there, but uh, they might have further loyalty to the Tyrells rather than to the Crown and to Cersei as a whole. The final example from Cersei 4 is that Lucian Frey is said to have used Arbor Gold to persuade 30 of the most devout to support him in his bid for High Septon. This suggests that Frey is attempting to gain the seat of High Septon through lies and through bribery, rather than through pure devotion to the faith, which very much foreshadows the issues that are brought up by the High Sparrows and the Sparrow Movement later on in A Feast for Crows and A Dance with Dragons. Speaking of A Dance with Dragons, we later see that Arbor Gold crops up quite a bit around Tyrion. It seems to primarily be in reference to his companions for the first part of the book, as the first encounter with this wine takes place in Illyrio's mansion. This absolutely makes sense, given the levels of duplicity we've seen from the cheesemonger earlier in the series and within Dance itself. The second is quite a bit more interesting. Aegon VI Targaryen states that he was swapped out for a baby that was sold to Varys for a jug of Arbor Gold. This is an excellent use of the phrase by Martin, as it's one of a pile of clues towards Aegon not being legitimate. For a bit of context, many believe that Aegon is not the son of Rhaegar and Elia, 
but it's rather a black fire through their female line. There's a bunch of evidence throughout dance pointing in this direction, and the specific wine used for the baby swap uh, is a tiny hint in that direction as well, as it's the only type of wine that Martin has previously associated with any sort of deception, and he seems to be throwing it in here as a further red flag for Aegon's legitimacy. My favorite example from Dance, as well as perhaps the most concrete example of Martin using Arbor Gold as an indication for deception, comes from Winterfell. Early on in the book, Wyman Manderly departs White Harbor with three frays. Later on in the novel, he arrives at Winterfell with zero frays, but with three wonderful, massive meat pies. Due to his connections to the story of the rat cook and his hatred for the frays expressed to Davos earlier in the book, it seems quite likely that Wyman killed the three frays and served them to their relatives via these meat pies. Wyman specifically refers to the pies as, quote, the best pies I have ever tasted, and he asks those around him to, quote, wash it down with arbor gold and savor every bite. I know I shall. Arbor Gold is tied pretty clearly into this deception and into Wyman's glee, further solidifying the connection that Martin seems to be creating throughout the most recent books with this lying wine. Getting into the history of this wine a bit, Arbor Gold is specifically mentioned only twice prior to Feast, and yet both of these instances are excellent examples of dishonesty and medicines. Both of these occurrences happen in A Storm of Swords, and firstly we hear about Tyrion drinking Arbor Gold heavily during his wedding to Sansa Stark. On a metaphorical level, this ties into the idea of their marriage being a lie, not being built out of love or anything remotely close to it, but rather being forced into existence through Tywin's political will alone. Additionally, Arbor Gold is used to toast to the health and safety of King Joffrey and Lord Hand Tywin both of whom would meet premature ends within that very book. In this case, the lie is more ironic on the part of the author, and this being the type of wine might have served as the inspiration for Littlefinger's dialogue one book later, as Martin might be building on this idea of having this kind of small little hint throughout the series towards lies, irony, or other dishonesty. With all that said, let's take a look at the last couple uses of the phrase Arbor Gold and speculate on what they might mean for the future of the series. In the prologue of Feast, Lazy Leo Tyrell discusses Arbor Gold twice while hanging out with Pate and others from the Citadel at a tavern. The first time he discusses this wine, it's in reference to not telling his father, Morin Tyrell, of the toast of one of his compatriots that he might find offensive. Martin may be intending to signal that Leo could be in more contact with his family than meets the eye. He appears to have been exiled to the Citadel and on bad terms with the Tyrells, but perhaps they wanted to have an agent on the inside, in order to closely monitor the activities of the second most powerful house in the Reach, House Hightower. Leo's importance only seems to be growing, as in the final chapter of Feast, Sam encounters the Tyrell outcast using a glass candle, something that we really haven't seen much of thus far in the series. We also learn from the prologue that he's a devotee of Marwyn the Mage, an archmaester of the Citadel who's devoted to magic, who just departed to join Daenerys. With Marwyn gone, perhaps the duplicitous Leo will take a more important role in introducing Samuel to the more mystical elements at play in Old Town, which could prove very important given Euron's attack coming soon. The final use of the phrase that I wanted to examine today comes from the Kingbreaker chapter, which is a Barristan point of view chapter. His star Zolarak asks one of his servant boys to fetch a jug of Arbor Gold for him while he's being deposed by Barristan. I talked a bit about Hisdar in my video speculating on Barristan's death, but the use of this particular phrase and wine could be further indication that the King of Marine could have plans in motion during the Battle of Fire. Namely, he could be working for the Pit Fighters, or with the Pit Fighters, who are shouting his name in support of him during the Winds of Winter sample chapters. This could be some plot in order to get revenge for imprisoning him, and it could end up with Barristan being killed. There is one last historical note that I want to make, and it comes from Fire and Blood. So it is more recent, and it does tie into Martin wanting to use this phrase more in his more recent works. Uh, for those who do not want late game House of the Dragon spoilers, just be sure to skip ahead to the next timestamp in the description, as this does spoil something about one of the last battles of the war. Three, two, one, warning over. So, with the battles at Tumbleton... Rhaenyra is betrayed by two of the dragon seeds. One of them, Ulf White, survives the combat and is met by one Lord Hightower. The two of them meet in a tent, and Lord Hightower, 
offers Ulf White a jug of wine, Arbor Gold. Ulf drinks it, and he is poisoned, and he is killed. As Hobart Hightower was a part of this group known as the Caltrips, who was trying to kill the two betrayers and just overall make sure that everything wrapped up smoothly at Tumbleton. So we can see that even in the historical works that Martin seems to be keeping in mind that Arbor Gold should be in some way tied to dishonesty in that it is tied to this poisoning and this betrayal of the betrayer. My main takeaway from this video and from this topic as a whole is that in the Winds of Winter, which hopefully will come out someday, I think it will, it's important to be on the lookout for the phrase Arbor Gold, as Martin seems to really like using it as an indication for dishonesty or duplicity from his characters, as it is something super subtle that is kind of only picked up on if you are as insane as I am or as other people who are who have also theorized about this. In the past, I will leave some links in the descriptions to some other posts covering this topic as they're quite interesting. So this has been my video on Arbor Gold and on lies. What do you think of this? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, I really appreciate any likes, subscribes, anything you want to throw my way. Uh, specifically because it really helps me grow the channel and it just makes me feel good. And I like feeling good as I would hope most people do. Uh, yeah, more videos coming in the near future. I do have a lot more free time. Uh, I am unsick. I am out of Ireland. I am back in the saddle again, just making videos for you all, and I am excited to do more of it. So if you want to catch more, be sure to subscribe, and I will talk to you all soon. Peace.